So hello again, this is the teacher G. So welcome to my class. So today we will talk about the geologic time scale, which is first the Precambrian period. So history of the Earth or geologic time scale of the Earth. So when we say geologic time scale, it talks about the calendar of events of the past uh, happening. So tumutukoy ito sa mga nangyari noon that explains everything today. So ito yung tumutulong in order for us to understand everything, how they exist, how they died, or how they got extinct. So it is divided into eons, era, period and the events that happened during those periods so it is divided into four the precambrian paleozoic mesozoic and cenozoic and this era are divided then into periods the cenozoic is divided into two the mesozoic is divided into three and the paleozoic is divided into six so first we will talk about the precambrian period. So, as you can see, Precambrian period uh, explains on how the earth was formed. It is also the beginning of everything. It is the best book history that marks the uh, existence of the earth or the planet earth. So, the Precambrian period Time span comprises more than 80% of the Earth's entire history. So because of the existence of this Precambrian period, so we have life today. So without the Precambrian or without the events that happened during the Precambrian, we can't, um, we can't enjoy our life today. So, as you can see in the PowerPoint, it is a motion of asteroids and planetary that form into planets with a collision, with a fusion of elements and compound that gives life to Earth. So, the period that occurred is 4.5 billion years to 542 million years ago. So, ito yung uh, pag-ukur ng Precambrian period. So, which mark by different layers of sedimentary rocks that helps the time when this uh, period began. So, it is it provides kumbaga, evidence to everything. So these layers contain the permanent record of the Earth's past. So these layers contain a consistent layers to identify in terms of absolute and relative dating. And also it helps geologists or paleontologists to determine kung ilang taon na bang na exist or anong time na exist ang isang fossils. So there was once, or the Earth is more than 600 million years old when life begins, which means that the Earth is already existing, even though there is no life on it or in it. So, including the remains of fossilized plants and animals buried when sediments were formed. So after that, the planet had pulled down from its molten state. So when we see molten state, that it is a form of magma, volcanic eruption. So after that, the Earth now is, uh, the Earth cooled down and it forms or develop a solid crust in ocean. So this is where it started. Ocean created from water vapor in the atmosphere. So dun na create yung ocean from the water before of the atmosphere and this primordial seas or ancient seas give life. So because of the existence of the ocean, dito tayo nagsimula ang existence din ng life or buhay. So many scientists think this primordial seas give rise to life with hot, mineral-rich volcanic vents acting as catalyst for chemical reaction or 
aid for the existence of life across the surface of a tiny water bubbles which led to the first cell membrane so the first thing that na occur in our planet is a microorganism or the a first cell membrane or a bacteria so the first multi-celled animals So we have the Edicarians and the Kinsonia. So Edicarians are creature like boar or little grow on seabed. And also it is locked, locked in obese heads, kumagawala silang ulo, mouth or digestive organ. So it's very hard to identify if this creature are uh, Kumbaga, it has life or it is already a living organism because it doesn't have its head and it, it's locked with mouth or digestive system. So as you can see, I can't, uh, wala ko nakita ng pictures ng Edicarians, but as I've searched Edicarians, they are same with Dickensonia. A Dickensonia is a resemblance rug or rug dormant or rib Dorma. So, as you can see in the picture, para talaga siyang rib na isang tao, pero para siyang dorma din na uh, likes or structure yung kumbaga. Ka, mukha niya yung mga trapo sa ating bahay. So, those are the first multi-celled organisms. So, earliest living organism were microscopic bacteria record as early as 3.5 billion years ago even in the under planets so they believe that the other planet already or has already life but the existence of this microscopic bacteria so a bacteria can live in a, even though in a very extreme environment so photosynthesis is a move that would ultimately lead to a simple plant and which open planet to animal life but in a um, cyanobacteria or inside the ocean so the one like start ang photosynthesis then it leads life Kumbaga, with the start or with the energy of the sun it leads to uh, photosynthesis in the ocean and then it so happened it results to life so 21% N of oxygen began to breathe life into more complex organisms. So once uh, oxygen is present, there is a tendency that the planet will develop life. Because as we all know, oxygen is the main ingredient or the first requirement in order for a planet to be a living planet. In a cyanobacteria, about 2.4 billion years ago, oxygen was released from the sea as a byproduct of photosynthesis by cyanobacteria. So as you can see kanina a while ago of our PowerPoint about with the presence of by, uh, photosynthesis, it helps release a byproduct of oxygen. As we all know, oxygen is a waste product of a photosynthesis na process. So it is a result or it is a product of the cyanobacteria in the ocean. So the earliest multi-celled animals that survived the precambient fall into three main categories. So there, there these are the multi-celled animals that survive in or survive during the falling of the precambrian, and it is divided into three categories. First one are the sponge. So, diba, are we familiar with SpongeBob? So, if it's a soft-bodied creature lacking organs, they live by drawing water through the bodies and filtering it for food. So, they use it in order to live. So, as you can see, uh, hindi natin masyadong uh, makilala agad if this is a living organism because there are like sponge yung panghugas natin sa ating mga plateau and they are locked in terms of organs and the second ones are the cidarians so cidarians had suck like bodies example of this are the post picture the corals the jellyfish so simple digestive system so they have only simple and with no mouth but with mouth but no 
anus. So they could survive without a anus, but they have already its mouth. And the third one are the annelids. So had fluid body cavities and breathe through their skin. So as you can see, they use their skin in order for them to breathe in on breath out and so that they could survive. So these are the examples of the annelids. So the eons, the eons of Precambrian. We have the Hadean, Archaean, and Proterozoic. So this is where the Hadean is the formation of the Earth. So Hadean Aeon, 4.5 to 4.0 billion years ago, it is the formation of the solar system, the first rock, and Earth's surface was incredibly unstable. So this time represents the Earth or Earth history. So during this time, the planet was characterized by partially molten surface, volcanism, and asteroid impact. So this is the ano kumbaga, what happened during the Hidian eon. So the molten surfaces like the magma and the lava, the volcanic eruptions, and also the asteroid impacts. So because of that events, nabuo ang ating planeta. And it was named by a Greek god, Hades, or the god of underworld. So, doon nila nakuha yung Hedion, yon na pangalan. So, Hedion Eon happens 4.6 to 4 billion years ago where the Earth is collision. So, collision of the Earth formation of the planets, water, presence of water, moon, poor accretion, magnetic field, and late bombardment. So, dito nangyayari or ito yung mga events during the Hadean Eon. So, the most important thing here is the earth cleansing, water, and the core creation. So, next one is the Archean Aeon. So, it happens during 4.2 to 2.5 billion years ago. It is the crust began to harden and what we call the one planet or the first continent, which is the Pangaea. We have the first ocean, the first DNA, tectonic activity, so motion of the Earth's lithosphere or the crust, the first continent, which is the Pangaea. Now, after million years, it's split or split into two continents, which is the Laurasia in the Gondwana land, and also we have the prokaryote bacteria. So, and after that, iron formation and the great, great oxygen event. So, ito na yung start yung presence of the oxygen. So, ito na, the bacteria, the pangea, the DNA, and the uh, oxygen presence or the oceans. So, Proterozoic Eon. Proterozoic Eon comes from the Greek and Greek word means earlier life. So, Proterozoic Eon, so the events are the oxygen crisis. First, eukaryotes, so example of eukaryotes are the animals, plants, and humans. Snowball Earth multicellular life and ozone stabilization. So it is the appearance of oxygen in the atmosphere, but uh, it is where uh, hindi pa talaga tayo pwede makasurvive during this eon because of the oxygen crisis or crisis. Primitive life forms bacteria and blue-green algae. So oxygen believed to have been produced by the photosynthesis back to the uh, Archean times, which is only 1-2% to 2 of it. And life, we have the eukaryotes and the multicellular cell. So we have the archetarchs and the stromatolites. So this is the archetarchs and the stromatolites. 
So stromatolites layer form when the sediments are trapped and precipitated by cyanobacteria. So mostly nakikita natin to sa uh, seashore or sa dagat. So architarchs not prelude the expansion of the, of the cyanobacteria. So this architarch does not survive the viral uh, taas ang yahang lifespan. And stromatolites reach their greatest uh, abundance and diversity. That's around 1,200 million years ago. So, kumbaga, nag-flourish ang stromatolites. And it hardens at the time goes on. So, it was also during the Proterozoic that the first symbiotic relationship between the mitochondria and the chloroplast. So mitochondria, as you all know, it is the powerhouse of the eukaryotes and chloroplasts for the plants and some protists only and the roots evolved. So it is the first symbiotic relationship between the cell or between the mitochondria and the chloroplasts. So, as you all know, chloroplasts can be found in plants. So wala pong chloroplasts ang human. Kasi hindi naman tayo nagkakaroon ng process which is the photosynthesis. And chloroplast is very important in terms of the process of photosynthesis. So the present is the key to the past. So whatever we discover today, it helped us to understand yesterday. So it helped us to uh, develop or to na maintindihan natin why everything existed. Bakit kailangan mag-exist ng isang bagay para mabuo ang ganito. So everything na nangyari noon, it helps us to be a better or kumaga better version of our planet. So sana alagaan natin ang planet ang ating tinitirahan kasi hindi ito atin. Ito ay hiram lamang. And after how many years, we will say goodbye to this planet kasi lahat ng nag occur is mawawala din. So which means we are just a temporary kumbaga, borders of this planet. Kumbaga, this is our boarding house and the time comes that we need to leave. Kumbaga, kailangan na natin iwan ang ating nakasanayan. So dapat talagaan natin ito. As you all know, humans are the caretaker of our planet. At huwag natin hayaan na masira na lang kasi how our future generation enjoy if we already exhaust, destroyed everything. So that's all. Thank you and God bless. Like, share, and subscribe.